we met at Abbey Road and I was the senior engineer and Kirsty had a independent sort of production room there. We love film, we're passionate about film and we just saw probably a little bit of a niche kind of in the market to really kind of pull out the stops and specialize in, in creating kind of music for film, film scores. We'd done a few gigs where we'd had to go to another country and start mixing something, record and mix, and in, in rooms that weren't necessarily set up for mixing. And when we got there, it was kind of like a blank canvas and we went, oh, let's put this here and do, let's just organize it a little bit differently. I think we were always just dreaming of having somewhere to do that and just push that to the next stage, really. And we had inherited this space. This studio belonged to a, a British recording artist called Dido. And it was at one stage a really proper studio build in the old days of like, you know, a lot of time and effort and skill from designers, builders and acousticians. Uh, but obviously we needed to kind of modify it quite considerably for what we did. Well, I think we were aware of some of the software-based things, but we hadn't actually used those ourselves. We'd, by that point, set up our lovely B&W 7.1 system. In the room, we're sounding good, and it sounded great. You know, we're going, wow, this really sounds great. We're happy. And then our, our friend sort of says, well, I've got this kind of awful sounding room, and I've done this, and it's transformed how I work and we were like well that's sort of the other end to us but we did start thinking about it. Well we went to Alan, Alan Jenkins, that yeah. cutting room in Soho and we went and listened to it and we, we he, he played us before and after. And we went, we went wow. wow gee, that's <laughs> pretty impressive if you know what I mean. It was just some sort of like new world order of correction of <laughs> stuff going on that just centered everything. We were about to sort of move to a Dolby Atmos format. So we knew we needed sort of more channels of processing. And so this seemed to be a pretty positive kind of step forward sort of for us in terms of our, our, our monitoring. We realized that we were obviously investing quite a bit of time in setting up to begin with. To have a room where that was preset was one thing, but what we didn't know until we got going is that we were building up a really great reference of how things should sound. And that the longer that, that went, our clients were really happy. They were happy to come here. They were happy to trust our judgment. I mean, we've had dubbing mixers ask the music editor who's mixed the score. And when they've said it's come from us and we've mixed it here, they've gone, great, we know we don't need to do any EQ now. And it's, it's great. And that's, that's just the reliability of the reference we've built up. And it's just like everything came into a, a beautiful focus that just allowed you to really get in, into the music and into the mix. Once we've got our head around it, it it's been great because we, we can experiment and we can see what things we're doing in the room, what difference they're making to our monitoring before we even introduce optimization or anything like that. For us, it, it could change from day to day whether it's one of us sitting here doing something, two of us sat here. Those things have to be changed on the fly sometimes. We don't know how many people might turn up to a mix review. And so it's, it's really simple. We can just change that in, in, in a second to make the experience of listening much better for everybody. Even if it's just to check that, you know, this is doing, the monitors are doing what we want them to do, or sometimes just because we've got to move things and out, we've had to move the monitors. And actually the, the analyzer within Trinov will tell us quite accurately, quite alarmingly so, actually whether we put them back in the, the, you know, the, the, correct, the correct positions or in the positions that we want to make the most of. The Trinov is kind of like, you know, one of your most valuable players. It sort of sits quietly. You can't even see it. It's in our machine room and our server room. It couldn't be more integral and important to how we see and perceive what we do as mix engineers. Just the confidence of knowing that what you're hearing is, is going to translate to, to what your clients hear is, is pretty important. And whilst you're trying to build a, a reputation, you really want to get as many scores on the board that, that are hitting the mark. I mean, we've all had to invest in things over the years and I, I, I guess that's something that will stay with you. You can change your monitors, you can change your room, but your turn up's always going to be useful. It could be transformative in what you're doing and, and, and perhaps your career.